this day tonight, Mick Jagger, state three. I always wanted to do that. As if in some way to compensate for his international reputation, it's on this small grazing property, 30 miles outside Canberra, that Mick Jagger lives in the property's overseer's quarters. Mick, have you found the work on the film particularly tiring? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What hours are you working? Um, uh, 24, about, <laughs> I should think. I work on it in my sleep, memorising what I've got to do the next day. We get up about 6.15 and we finish around 6.30, so it's sort of a long day. Have you found Ned Kelly a difficult part to play? Uh, I've never done many parts. I've only done one before, really. Um, this isn't as difficult. Um, because um, I'm playing something that's so different from me. So that's a much easier game, really. Mick, when you're composing pop tunes, what, what are you trying to do? Is, do you, are you trying to do anything uh, special or just enjoy yourself? Uh, well, I mean, that's my job, sort of thing. I mean, that's what I like doing most. But you do like composing pop music? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not really so much on the music side, you know. But I'll leave that to my friend Keith. In 1962, John Lennon said that there was a, a better band than the Beatles, and he meant, of course, yourself. Yet the Beatles have been more commercially successful. Well, that's because they're much better songwriters, you know. But uh, that's not what rock and roll's about. I mean, they've just very... Uh, they're just a very good rock and roll band, and we all love them dearly. Bless their little mop tops. As you grow older, would you like to appeal to an older group? Uh, like my dad. Well, not necessarily your dad, but maybe your brother or uh, elder my brother. brother. Elder brother. No. We've got enough film there, all right. I, yeah. <laughs> you're, I, you're quite happy uh, appealing to uh, a largely teenage audience. No, they're not really. I mean, we try, don't try and appeal to anyone. I mean, anyone welcome, you know, to come. Mick, how do you react to the tremendously bad publicity you get personally, virtually all around the world? I couldn't. I, I don't sort of think about it. Is this bad or good? Well, I don't have a sort of bad publicity agent who goes around. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just what you know. People sell newspapers by writing bad things, so they tend that's what they tend to write about. And if you do anything nice, like sort of hit an old lady on the head, I mean, they don't write about it. You know, they they just sort of you know. I mean, that's what I mean. Everyone knows that. Mick, millions of teenagers almost around the world hang on virtually each word that you drop. Oh, I've got a backache. <laughs> Hang on, that. <laughs> Do you yourself feel any responsibility towards these people because they respect you so much? No, only because uh, a responsibility that one should feel for everybody. Yeah. Whether you're uh, anyone buys your records or whether you're just somebody walking down the street, it's your responsibility for your brother. It's your responsibility. I mean, everyone is everyone else's responsibility to give them as much understanding and as much love as you can. You spent, I think, two years at the London School of Economics. Yes, I've been trying to unlearn everything I learnt there ever since. I, but I, I think, almost succeeded. Would you, would you ever think of going back there? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. I didn't like it there very much. What um, didn't you like about that sort of academic learning? Uh, I wasn't given uh, any freedom to... Uh, pursue it, the course of studies which I was led to believe I could pursue and uh, that's why I didn't dig it and the, it's, it's changed since I left maybe it's a good thing I did but it's uh, got much more sort of um, subversive fortunately. Do you think subversion is a good thing? This is a function or one of the functions of students not the function one of them and uh, people should sort of let them get on with it you know subvert as much as you possibly can. On the big issues of the world Say Vietnam. Do you have an opinion? Do you, do you really think that? I suppose it is a big issue. I, um, it's kind of. I mean, everyone knows what everyone feels about Vietnam. It's completely pointless talking about it. I mean, everyone knows it's. It's. I mean, so awful and wrong uh, to be involved in it. I mean, one's not. Well, I mean, I per personally don't feel in, involved from a national point of view. But being in Australia this long, and, and one does get involved, and I feel very sorry for Australian soldiers who go who have to go there or people that get called up because i don't really believe that they're protecting their fatherland i mean i'm sorry i don't i don't see it like that oh, well, you know.
Ned Kelly is directed by Tony Richardson. If all goes according to plan, it'll be just another epic, like his Charge of the Light Brigade, those magnificent men in their flying machines, and of course Tom Jones. I'm putting it in some way at this side, and then we might bring that cart in there. Like the two trestles? The two trestles and all those boxes of apples and so on. For this scene, Richardson needed 150 extras. Understandably, the shooting's a great attraction for the locals. For last Sunday's crowd scenes, even a federal minister's wife travelled from Canberra to appear. Now, uh, for Richardson, Ned Kelly may be just another success. But for Jagger, he says he'll go back to more pop music. It's there he gets satisfaction. Often when people have been as tremendously successful as you have in your field, uh, they get to a, a pinnacle and then they start to get bored with it. Have you ever felt this in your oh, career? Yes, always been. Before we reached the pinnacle, we were always very bored. But I, yeah, you you can't sort of go off onto tangents, you know, before you realise uh, that you should be back on the uh, grindstone or pinnacle, as you call it, again. Hey, hey, hey. The gentlemen of the press have been kept waiting. Mick Jagger is half an hour late for his press conference. He's never managed to please journalists very much anywhere, but he's news. He knows it, and so do they. Jagger's half an hour late. Is this the sort of thing you'd expect? Well, I'd expect it, yes. I think it's a bad show. It's terrible. It's really terrible. Has it ever happened to you before? Uh, it happened when he was out here last time. It was an hour late then, so we've become used to it by now. Do you think that's, um, that, uh, that's the sort of thing that, that, that a chap like that should be able to do? I don't think anyone should be able to do it. Everyone's, you, you've got to, in this business, you've got to, we've made an appointment to see him here at 12 and he should be here at 12. Is this going to put you against him and you're questioning to him, do you think? Well, it's going to antagonise everyone, I would imagine. It just starts, starts everything off on the wrong foot, yes. So you think he'll be coming into a hostile audience? Uh, I would imagine so, yes, yes. Mick Jagger has had a very bad press. His fine contempt for convention seems to irritate journalists as much as it irritates the good citizens of Glen Rowan. By 12 o'clock, 50 reporters have crowded into the Chevron Hilton's conference room with 50 different preconceptions of Mick Jagger. What do you think of him? Uh, as what? As a person. Oh, he does a damn good job of what he wants to do, which is to be a, a paid exhibitionist. He makes a lot of money, he laughs all the way to the bank, as Liberace said. Do you like his motives? I don't think they're any more dishonest than uh, newspaper editors. Some people would have a personal distaste for a person like Jagger. Um, do you think journalists can afford to let these sort of distastes come through? Well, they do. They do. The old journalists, when I say old, I mean above 30, let their prejudices come into this immensely. And the people who are buying Jagger's records and about to see Jagger's films and appreciate Jagger's work um, don't appreciate this sort of reporting which is very heavily biased towards the oldies and I don't say oldies with any disrespect. Good morning! Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm sorry we're so late. The reason why we're late is quite simple. Um, Marianne Faithful was very exhausted and fatigued by the journey here and she collapsed this morning and we had to take her to hospital. And that's um, why we kept you waiting. I'm very sorry, but your country's a long way away, and that journey's an absolute monster. Um, 
So am I. Right. We were quoted in a London newspaper today as describing some of your Australian critics as pathetic and saying that if necessary you would throw beer over them. We quoted correctly. I don't think so. I don't ever remember saying. Probing questions, intelligent questions, rude questions and stupid questions. And from it Jagger emerges as a person of intelligence and poise, a languid manner and a dry laconic wit. You're not quite sure whether he resents the labels that journalists like these have tagged on him, or whether he revels in them, or how much of the tag is true. And uh, how old is Chip Stratford? <laughs> I'm an actor, I'm not really Ned Kelly. You know, I'm an actor playing Ned Kelly. I mean, I have to ride with a thing over my shoulder and, and, a, and a sort of suit that Ned Kelly would have worn and a great big beard down the bottom. You know, why should I? Nick, is it going to be very hard for you to look upon Marianne as a sister into this film? No, I've always wanted incestuous relationships. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of film, Nick? Would it be a musical or would it be a dramatic film? No, I don't really want to be... The organisers are more interested in attracting publicity than in giving information, and the journalists know it. Mick Jagger needs the reporters, and the reporters need him a sort of love-hate relationship that leaves some satisfied and some not. What did you think of him? Uh, oh, I was quite surprised. He uh, uh, came into a room with pressmen who I think appeared to be a bit hostile. Why? Uh, well, he was half an hour late. And, uh, I think some of them probably adopted attitudes before they saw him, as any uh, one reasonably does. But uh, obviously I think uh, we've seen him handle it fairly well. He acquitted himself very well against some pretty difficult questions. He was much more articulate than I expected. He was uh, witty in a number of places. He was a little evasive about certain things. Um, do you think he was justified in being evasive when he's confronting 50 trained journalists? Yes, well, on certain topics, yes. I mean, um, it's a, a journalist's job to, to be rude in some cases and to probe in areas where uh, someone may be embarrassed. Frank, what did you think of it? I've been going to press conference for uh, 20 years and, you know, I can remember people like Cary Grant. Well, this fellow's no Cary Grant, is he? Well, how do you mean he's no Cary Grant? Well, he just Grant. doesn't uh, have any star quality, you know. It's just like any other fellow sitting around. But, uh, he can't enthuse anyone. He does, certainly doesn't enthuse me. W w were you looking for someone to, to enthuse you? Well, you know, you've got to get a bit of pleasure out of your job when you go to a press conference. You, to see somebody like this, uh, to get a story out of it, you expect somebody with a little bit of spark in them. Kerry Grant is a mature, sophisticated actor. Um, Mick Jagger is a 24-year-old um, pop singer. He's a star. They tell me. You judge people harshly if they're stars, do you? No, not at all. No, I expect something from them. That's what I mean. You expect more from yeah. someone. And usually, in the past, I've got it. Suddenly, we're in the day of the non-star. What would you write about? When you, go, when you go back to your office? That's what I'm annoyed about. I haven't got anything to write about. Do you like press conferences? No. <laughs> Why not? Oh, I just like, to, I really like to keep myself to myself. And, and this, but I mean, I, I don't mind. You, you've all been very nice. Do you try to avoid them or do you see them as something like I try to avoid them, yeah. Do you like the sort of people that come to press conferences? I think you're, you're really much nicer than mine. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, I'm taking the role seriously. I mean, I, I'm not saying that I, I'm not going to have any fun because I think he had a lot of fun as well as having a very hard time. But uh, as far as the past concerned, yeah, I mean, it's not a joke as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's uh, otherwise it would be a bit, be a bad movie. Nick, is this the start of a film career for you as such? You sort of left the stones as such now. Are you getting oh, no, of being an actor? Left the stones. No, I want to concentrate on just being an actor. Or how much do you know about the moment? Well, I've read everything uh, that I have, that I could read. Obviously, I haven't had the advantage of being in Australia for months and going round and living in the bush and sleeping under the, uh, in the sub-zero conditions, <laughs> which, of course, I would have loved to have done. But, um, <laughs>